So Apple announced some refreshed MacBook Pros yesterday, and I promised we'd be getting a unit to review ASAP. Sure enough, look what arrived in the mail today, a shiny new 13-inch Mac. As you can see, the exterior design is the same as the previous gen MacBook Pro. Most of the changes are actually under the hood, and so it's gonna take us a few more days to really test things like speed, graphics performance, and battery life. For now though, I wanted to focus on the more obvious differences. First off, the keyboard. The good news is Apple updated the keys. The bad news is this probably won't be a meaningful change for most of you. The only real difference is that the new keys are quieter, exactly three decibels according to our tests. We did some side-by-side -side testing with the last-gen MacBook Pro, and it turns out that's true. The buttons make a more pleasing, lower-pitched sound. Basically, they're less clacky. The thing is, the keyboard is otherwise exactly the same. It's still flat and shallow. It's not any more precise or accurate. Personally, I tend to make typos on those flat keys, in part because the short travel means my key presses don't always register meaning I have to go back and re-enter the odd letter here and there. Anyway, if that sounds like you too, this new keyboard really isn't going to address your concerns. Continuing our tour, the MacBook Pro now uses Apple's True Tone technology on both the 13 and 15 inch models. This is a technology that first made its debut on the iPad Pro. Setting aside all the marketing jargon, there's an ambient light sensor inside that can read the color temperature of the light in the space you're in and then adjust the screen accordingly to match. I imagine this is great for everyday use, but people like photographers and videographers who can get picky about color might want to turn off that feature while they're working. Hey Siri, what's the weather today? Last thing, Apple included its custom T2 security chip, the same one used in the iMac Pro. Among other things, that chip allows Siri to work in an always on sort of way so that you can say, hey Siri, without having to hit the Siri icon. It works well and you'll have a chance to set it up during the initial setup process. That process takes just a minute. You'll be asked to say a bunch of phrases into the mic. At least in my case, I never had to repeat anything, so it all went very fast. A word to the wise on Hey Siri. It works well, but if you have an iPhone nearby, it might chime in when you say the words Hey Siri. For the sake of my testing, I temporarily disabled that feature on my iPhone, but that may or may not be workable for you in real life. So who are these upgrades for? As you'd expect, professionals. Photographers, videographers, scientists, coders. Anyone who needs high-end graphics, a ton of storage, and enough CPU power to crunch a lot of data. To that end, there are a lot of under-the-hood upgrades here. Quad-core processors on the 13-inch Touch Bar MacBook Pro and six cores, standard, on the 15-inch model. There's also improved graphics and a larger battery inside both models to offset that heavier-duty processing power. That's just the sort of thing we'll be testing in our full review. Stay tuned for that in the coming days. In the meantime, thank you for watching.